meeting of the Niles Main District Library. Um, and would you please do a roll call? Karen. Here. Carolyn. Here. Dennis. Here. Diane. Here. Daddy. Here. 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 Let's stand to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right. Um, since we have some uh, guests tonight who are going to be making some presentations, um, I'm going to take them out of order, and then we'll resume our agenda. Um, at our request, um, we had a couple of the firms who gave us, who responded to our request for proposal for auditing services. Uh, come tonight and, and speak to us. We want to thank them very much for uh, sending representatives to our meeting tonight and, and speaking with us. Uh, we considered your proposal very seriously. We just want to hear a bit more from you sure. and to meet you. Um, so um, let's see. Would you please like to? Uh, let's see. Um, I'd like to have them in, on the camera. Maybe they can stand down here or. Sure. Yeah, would you like to step over guys. here? Yeah, you tell us. We're step over here, and uh, the camera will be trained upon you. All right. Uh, you will be on YouTube. Okay. All your friends will <laughs> see. My kids enjoy that. Yes. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Fine. So, um, we please like to introduce yourself. Sure. And, um, if you have a little presentation or just a little, tell us a little Overview. bit about your Overview. Sure. Yes. Absolutely. Uh -huh. um, so, we are Lauterbach and Eamon. That's the folder there in front of you. Um, what I'd like to do is just kind of a brief history of the firm, certainly introduce myself as well as Sean Hickey, um, and then I assume you guys maybe have questions and things, so we'll kind of open it up for any of those as well. Uh, so Lauterbach Heyman was formed 22 years ago. Our two founding partners are still very active in the firm, so Sherry Lauterbach and Ron Heyman. Uh, they came from a mid-sized accounting firm where they worked on government engagements. And what they found at that larger firm is that the government engagements weren't necessarily treated like other engagements of the accounting firm. Uh, typically, they got the kind of lowest ring of staff to assist on their engagements, uh, the least amount of technology, um, and really had to kind of push to get their clients kind of the needs uh, fulfilled. Uh, and so 22 years ago, they decided that in the government world, there was a need for a niche firm that entirely supported uh, local government entities with audit services, consulting services, and we actually have a fairly significant uh, pension services group to help assist some of the pension plans within the state. Uh, so 22 years ago, we started with that mission of being kind of exclusive to the government niche. I'm happy to say we're still at about 99.2%, um, so we do have a small tax practice these days. Um, but our focus, our staff focus, our partner focus, our entire team is really servicing governments 12 months out of the year. Um, you'll see in our proposal that's a variety of services we now provide. You guys have obviously inquired about audit services. Um, but I will tell you on our client list, you'll also see a number of libraries that we provide accounting or financial support services to. Uh, so I think one of the uniquenesses is we get to work on engagements on both sides of the desk, and so we certainly have an appreciation for some of the internal operations, uh, which helps lead to, in my mind, efficiencies when we approach the audit as well. Uh, my brief story, so I've been with the firm 18 years. Um, I was actually the first intern, so I was employee number seven. Um, we're now up to, oh gosh, over 140, I think. So it's been kind of a, a fun little adventure seeing, you know, the firm grow over the years um, and be able to stay kind of true to our roots of, of servicing local government. So um, that's kind of been a, a fun little adventure. Um, I handle a lot of our client service needs as well as technical needs, so that's kind of where I spend the majority of my time. So when we talk about new GASB implementations, um, I can tell you I actually had a large teaching session this morning with our clients. Uh, that's typically where I spend my time. So you might not see me every day of the engagement, but I'm kind of working in the background in that support role. Um, I'd like to now introduce Sean Hickey, let him give you a little bit of history, and, and Sean is very active with our library audit engagements. Thanks, Jim. Uh, I'm Sean Hickey, I'm an audit manager with Lauterbach and Eamon, and I've been with Lauterbach and Eamon a little over two years. Prior to that, I was at another uh, CPA firm uh, for 11 years working in the government industry. 
Um, and uh, kind of to build on what Jamie was saying, one of the reasons I made the switch is because I was working in government at the larger firm, and that wasn't the main focus of that firm. And so it's nice, uh, you know, since I've been here, that was a really nice change where government is the main practice. Um, and so uh, my role on the engagement, a number of things. Uh, I helped Jamie with the proposals, and so I, I know uh, getting the information to Greg, so I helped uh, you know, identify potential clients. Um, and then the other part of it is, is uh, I'm audit manager with the libraries, uh, as well as some other you know, municipal clients. But my role would really be uh, on the engagement to make sure that uh, uh, anything that needs to be communicated to the board, making sure we're doing the scheduling, we're staying on time. Uh, we have a completely separate report team that will uh, prepare the report and, and work with the library team to make sure that uh, the report is done on time and it's accurate. Um, so that's kind of my role on the day-to-day, -day, and I'll work with uh, our other staff that will be on the engagement, you know, just to make sure things go smoothly. And from the board's perspective, just to make sure that uh, we communicate anything that we feel is important to improve the library. Okay, all right. Thank you. I know, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, go around the room and see if there's any questions sure, that absolutely. people have. I have one or two myself. Sure. I just want to see if that's great. would like to voice a, a question or two. On a library of this size, do you generally visit on an annual report or an annual audit? Is that an in in-house visit or is that done remotely? Oh, no, we will for sure be on site mm -hmm. with you. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that's a two, three, four, six days, ten days? Well, the process is what we'll do is, um, well, the first thing we'll do is we'll uh, schedule an interest conference with management and set out a timeline. And then usually what we do, we like to come out for one day uh, to do what we call preliminary work. Um, and that kind of is all of our planning and risk assessments, uh, our understanding of the controls that are in place at the library. And then depending on uh, the accounting and most good clients are we two to three days where we have a staff personnel uh, in the field. Uh, and then from there, we, like I said, we change, uh, turn it over to our report team, and then they're going to start drafting the report and communicating with management uh, to make sure that the report's done in a timely manner. And the presentation to the board is that do you, do you come yes. to do that? We do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we encourage that for sure. I think it's a good opportunity for the board to ask questions. Sure. Dennis? They're going to give a presentation, right? Pardon? They're going to have a presentation, right? Well, I think this is it. So, it's it's this uh, brief overview right yeah, here. Right. Uh -huh. right. Okay. Right. Good. All right. I have no questions. Okay. okay. I just have uh, one because um, I was reading your client educational opportunities. Yes. Uh, so I was wondering this because I'm you know seeing no additional costs that you're sure. cut yes. out, but yes. it's folded. But, yes. Um, but I was wondering, is that something that you would do training here? Do you invite people to your so we picked a perfect day because I held training today, actually, with a large group of clients. We had about a 60 attendees that came this morning. Um, we do, um, we're happy to come out and do on-site training with staff if there's topics that ultimately need some discussion or, or some support. Uh, but we do throughout the year, I can tell you we had one in early January to talk about um, payroll taxability issues. Governments have all kinds of uniquenesses when it comes to payroll and deductions. Uh, so that was attended by, I think, about 120 clients. It was a large group. Um, and again, that's free of you know, any cost to our clients. Uh, we view it as if we can help educate our clients on upcoming changes and standards. It just makes the audit process that more efficient because they're kind of up to speed on, on issues you know, that are out there. Uh, this morning we had a presentation on debt structure, so we've had a number of governments considering either referendum, debt issuances, etc. So we had a bond professional come this morning. Um, so it's not just the firm educating, but we'll reach out to our resources to help provide that free education to our clients as well. Uh, so we typically do about three of those throughout the year, uh, kind of rotating topics depending on demand or need. Um, and then certainly any on-site training that we can help provide would be included. And what we are providing. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you know, I was wondering, um, what about the Niles Main Library made you um, consider us as a potential client? What did you see about us that um, gravitated towards your firm? Sure. 
Um, so I think in general, we enjoy working with our library groups. I would say they tend to be a group of clients that I know Sean and his staff, you know, the, the personal relationship is one that we really enjoy. Um, and so working with a lot of the directors and business managers in the library kind of world, we, we really value those relationships. We have lots of very good relationships with our libraries. Um, one of the other uniquenesses, and, and I think with some larger firms, you'll find that they won't even bid on government engagements of your guys' size. Um, I, I kind of laugh at that because I think some of our best clients are clients that are similarly sized to you guys and to other libraries. So that's kind of our bread and butter is working with some of those smaller units of government and really having that good you know, client relationship uh, be established. So. And then I noticed we have some sort of a matrix we received from Greg, and I noticed under client retention, um, if I understand this correctly, it's a dark circle. What does that represent, Greg? Well, that's um, that's really the evaluation is really through our labor discussion. I'd be happy to go through that. Well, here, oh, I'm sorry. It says client retention and, and the um, levels were one to five. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a question about client retention. Mm -hmm. Do you, um, it, according to what I'm looking at, it looks lower than um, what we um, anticipated. And I was wondering if that has something possibly to do with your selection of clients like do you uh, do you weed out your clients um I'm not, I'm not sure what the data point is that you've been provided i guess i'm a little confused what probably the, um i, I think it's really for for our discussion this, okay so that's, so it's, it's not something that, that we want to, I don't know we we want to discuss this or, uh, okay information for you. Yes, Carolyn, were you done? Can I move on? Um, yes. Okay, Patty, thank you. Um, I'm satisfied with what I'm hearing so far. I have some more questions. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, we'll be looking at a number of different um, places, firms. Um, so why should we pick you? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, I will tell you, because we are niched in this 12 months out of the year, this is this is what we do every day. Um, our staff is well-versed in, in government, uh, well-versed in the uniquenesses of modified accrual accounting and what that means and property tax levies and debt structures and um, all of the things that local government kind of deals with that's unique from everybody on the outside world. Um, and libraries in particular are a large niche of our client group. Um, we work with nearly 40 of them and so this is you know, kind of a mini niche within our government niche that we have good expertise in that regard. Um, Greg is our business manager here, perhaps. perhaps <laughs> Greg's probably got some good questions. Yeah. Well, really just one. Um, you know, I, I called references. And sure. If they're good references, they called. They said, hey, Greg called. Yes. Um, but I, you know, I did run across a situation where, interestingly enough, um, you were providing the month-to-month -month work, uh -huh. so you, you know they had, you know maybe a, a bookkeeper type or, sure. or a clerk type person doing sure. tables and stuff, and uh, and then you come in once a month yep. and uh, put the board packages together, close the month and sure. and report, and then at the end of the year uh, come out and do the uh, uh, cleanup prior to the, sure, the auditing preparation. Because you can't audit what you know, sure. you're doing yeah. the month-to-month. -month. Yeah. And um, um, other than, I mean, that's kind of what I do, <laughs> you know, among other things. But, you know, I was wondering, um, you know, by doing that, you know, um, what do you see, you know, you become aware of things that libraries are facing, mm -hmm. issues that libraries mm -hmm. are facing in their accounting and so forth. Sure. What do you see in that, in that role? Um, one of the big discussions that we've had with a number of our libraries is kind of the concept of technology coming into the business operations um, that starts with software that mm -hmm. you guys utilize um, a lot of our libraries have obviously been pushing for going green and what does that mean to the accounting and finance function because typically that department has been a very paper intensive department we do a lot of paper pushing I say you know um, to get invoices approved to get you know checks out the door to process payroll there typically is a lot of paper involved 
Um, so one of the interesting things that we've seen just in the last several years as a shift is this concept of you know, electronic versions and electronic signatures and reduction of paper and how does that affect kind of the internal control environment, the checks and balances. Um, obviously we appreciate those things as auditors, but in our role in certain libraries where we're working in the internal function, you know, how do you still get through a process from point A to point B, make it still cost effective to do it, and how do we get it into a paperless environment? Um, so that I know actually just this week I had multiple discussions with a couple of our libraries about that idea. So. Thanks. Okay. Um, I have one or two questions. Sure. One was just a follow up on something you said. Very quickly, sure. you mentioned pensions, and mm -hmm. but I didn't quite catch what you said about it. Uh, you do work regarding reviewing yeah. your pension mm -hmm. obligations? Or? Yeah, we're very well versed in pensions mm -hmm. in the state of Illinois, so that includes IMRF, which I saw you guys made a lovely additional con contribution this That's past right. year that puts you well over 100%, which is great. Um, and we also have a specialty in the police and fire pension world as well. So kind of the three main pensions that run through the local government arena were, were we're experts for sure in that regard of understanding how those work and function. Okay. Yes. And finally, have you ever had a occasion where you felt you needed to contact the board directly? As that is, uh, you just felt that you needed to talk to the board directly about concerns that you had. And sure. How did you handle that? Um, sure. It's been many years, luckily. So um, we did, um, and this probably pre Sean sure. as well, uh, we did have a client. It was a smaller um, government client, not a library, thank goodness. Um, but. We had come across in some of our testing that we felt like there may be some fraud that was happening. Um, and we were not quite sure at that point if anyone within the finance department was involved in the fraud or not. Um, certainly as an auditor, as those things come to light, if we feel that there may be any involvement within the finance function, um, our obligation is absolutely to come to either executive director or the board directly to kind of bring those forth. Um, in this case, there was some fraud going on. It wasn't taking dollars. We actually had somebody who was changing their hire date in the payroll system to accrue more PTO time. And it was caught through our preliminary field work testing as we drilled into the employee files and realized that in the payroll system, the hire date did not match the date of hire that was in the personnel file. Um, so staff person noticed it, we continued our digging, we didn't raise any red flags right away, um, but continued to gather some facts and information and realized that this individual did in fact have access to the payroll system. And we could see her electronic footprint in the system um, going in and updating that hire date and, and she lost her job over three days of PTO time. Um, but that was an instance because payroll was obviously very integrated into the finance department of knowing who had approved, you know, those changes. So that would be kind of an example of when that might come to light. Okay, fine. Yes. Did anyone have any follow-up questions? Okay. All right, well, uh, Ms. Wilkie and Mr. Hickey, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. We appreciate the opportunity. The thank you. Um, we will be discussing this further uh, towards the end of our meeting. Sure. The reason we invited you here, of course, is we realize you may have other things to do with your evening. No, that's so okay. feel free to leave at this point. Uh, we'll sure. be here for a while okay. uh, this evening. All right. So, well, thank anyway, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Just to end that little break here, I just wanted to bring something to your attention that I thought was very interesting. Carolyn and I attended yeah, uh, oh, yeah, Susan, Lenke, Susie, and well, thanks for yeah, thanks we're attending you. there to Susie <coughs> uh, 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 Saturday, attended uh, the Monday. Legis Monday. Mon it was right. It was Monday. Yeah, no, yes, during the semester, no. attended the legislative uh, breakfast uh, that is held every year and they had a number of interesting speeches as usual and a, a very very cute little video that they produced too but one thing i just wanted to share with everyone is the magazine that they handed out to everyone featured us in part there were a lot of districts that were features but there would there was an article about our uh, hamilton's program so i'm just going to pass that around and you can look at that while we're um, waiting for our next uh, Speakers to come in. Hello, hi, how are you? Good evening. Why don't you uh, step down here? Okay. Um, the reason I'm asking you to do that is we do film our uh, library board meetings, and uh, the camera's down there, and I don't think you have to stand with your back to the camera, so uh, I'm glad your parents come up here to do the sure. presentation. 
Uh, welcome this evening to the Niles Meeting District Library Board Meeting, and we appreciate very much your responding to our request for proposal. And we looked at your proposal, and we were, were impressed, and we wanted you to come in so we could meet you and talk with you. Um, and we did get the materials, which were left at our place here. Um, I don't know that we've all had a chance to look at them yet, but we wanted to give you an opportunity to just give a presentation mm -hmm. about your firm. Sure. And tell us a little bit about yourself. And then what we'll do is um, I'll go around and, and ask a few questions, if that's all right. Sounds great. Okay, great. Well, on behalf of SICK, I'd like to thank the President and the members of the Board for inviting us here to present uh, more information about SICKICH, answer any questions that you all have uh, related to our proposal. Uh, my name is Brian Lefevre, and I'm one of our partners at SICKICH that specializes in local government. Uh, so local government all year round for me, whether it's audit, accounting services, um, various hats that I wear within the local government division, um, and also work with a lot of libraries and library districts um, throughout the, the northern suburbs. And let Martha introduce herself. I'm Martha Trager. I've been a manager with Sickage for seven years, and I also work on the government industry, so I do a lot of library, library district audits, as well as municipalities and other local governments. And I do also perform special projects and accounting services as well for local governments. All right. So you previously had our proposal. Um, the blue folder just has more information about the firm. And then um, we had just kind of put together kind of a, a highlighted um, presentation in in this separate document as well. And you can kind of go through some some highlights in this document and, and then obviously we have plenty of time for you all um, with questions. Um, <clears throat> and you'll see a page with a couple familiar faces and some other folks um, that are on our local government team. Um, and then we've highlighted some of our additional resources. Sickage is a professional services firm. A lot of folks just think of Sickage as a CPA firm, but there's a lot of other services that we provide to our clients. Um, showed some, some faces here with, with some positions for some other individuals um, that oftentimes um, assist some of our local government clients with some needs they have here, anywhere from human resource consulting to um, <clears throat> forensic investigations to IT security um, and compliance are some of the areas that um, <clears throat> that often uh, our government clients call us for assistance in. So what, what kind of really differentiates Sickage from, from other firms? Um, <clears throat> like I said, Sickage is a professional services firm. Um, our headquarters is in is in Naperville. We started as a, just a CPA firm back in 1982. I've been with the firm my entire career um, starting in the early 90s. It was about that time that um, we started getting into other disciplines besides just accounting. We saw that the, the change in the environment within the accounting industry was um, that smaller firms that were just doing accounting were merging into larger firms. We didn't want to merge into a larger firm, rather we wanted to stay independent. And by providing additional services um, to our clients, we found that that really fit um, the needs of a lot of our clients. Now, obviously there's certain services that we can't provide um, to our a test or audit clients, uh, but there are a lot of services that we can continue to provide um, to our audit clients as well. <clears throat> both, um, as I mentioned, both Martha and I work out of our Naperville office. Um, our partners and, and staff um, have a lot of expertise in the local government area. Uh, Fred Lance, who heads up our local government practice, is heavily involved um, throughout the country in teaching um, and educating about local government accounting and finance. Um, and uh, we, as, we, as we flip to the next page where we talk about um, some of our experience with uh, libraries and library districts, we listed a number of referrals. Uh, we'd love to have you contact them uh, listed in our proposal. Um, a lot of our clients also um, participate in the Government Finance Officers Association Certificate of Achievement for Excellence it's in Financial Reporting Program. Um, no libraries yet, though, so we want to we want to um, see who wants to be the first library to participate. <laughs> um, it's the it's it's really the most um, transparent type of financial document. What you have in your audit is an annual financial report, which meets the state's requirement for an audit. Um, a comprehensive annual financial report adds a lot more uh, historical statistical information. Um, we're also involved with the uh, the groups 
um, throughout the country that are setting financial reporting standards for local governments like the, um, the district. And um, we're always letting you know about those new standards that are going to be on the horizon um, three to five years in advance of their implementation. <clears throat> Locally, we participate um, heavily in um, several organizations. Um, oftentimes, our role is to educate. Uh, we have a lot of our partners, managers that, uh, that have done presentations uh, for various organizations to make sure that we're you know, educating our clients and prospects as well um, in terms of the changing environment that we have within um, what we call the GASB World Governmental Accounting Standards Board setting all the, all the rules for your financial reporting. <clears throat> With that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Martha to explain a little bit about our audit approach. Um, so when we perform an audit, the first thing that we like to do is schedule a planning meeting with the director, manager, as well as the audit partner and audit manager. And what this allows us to do is we set up a schedule based on your needs, deadlines, um, timing of when you want the audit to be finalized. And we work backwards to ensure that we have enough time scheduled for our preliminary field work and our final field work to ensure that our deadline, deadlines are met. We also discuss any areas of concern, anything that stands out as something that we may want to take a look at uh, based on management's concerns. And we determine our preliminary fieldwork request listing based on our discussions. So we tailor our requests to your needs to ensure that we're not asking for redundant information or missing anything that was discussed. Following the planning meeting, we schedule preliminary field work, at which time we typically review the internal control procedures to gain an understanding of the library's operations and to determine what the control systems that are in place, how they're designed, and if there's any room for improvement. We also do a review of IT system controls, as you may have heard a lot lately in the news. There's constantly phishing schemes and attempts to hack into systems. So we do what we can to review your IT system controls and provide any assistance there if it's necessary. Any of our knowledge and understanding we'd like to provide to you so that you're aware of room for improvement there as well. We also uh, review board minutes and determine a listing of items that will be requesting for final field work, once again, tailoring it specifically to your needs. Any compliance testing or additional testing that can be done at preliminary field work, we like to do at that time to attack any potential issues early and get that in front of you rather than waiting to the end. And finally, we also meet face to face with selected employees as well as send questionnaires to board members to get everyone's input on their areas of concern or anywhere that we should be focusing our audit procedures on. And that takes us to final field work, at which time we perform the majority of our testing. We typically request trial balances about a week up to a couple weeks ahead of final field work, which allows us to import the balances into our software and perform preliminary analytic review and comparing balances to budget and prior year, as well as taking into account discussions that we've had at the planning meeting and at preliminary field work this allows us to make a selection of accounts based on our risk assessments so that we know we're testing areas that are areas of concern or areas that have significant variances over prior year or historical. Um, this allows us to select only the, select specifically the, the accounts with variances so that we can look at more detail, not just analytic, but also review line item detail and come up with potential if there's miscodings or mispostings or mis misclassed journal entries so that we have a more detailed, thorough review of specifically higher risk areas. We remain on site through the completion of final field work, so the day that we're leaving is the day that we're done with testing. So follow-up afterwards should not be more than maybe a couple items that weren't available at the time that we were out here, which also allows us to meet those deadlines. Um, 
before we're done with field work, we like to meet with management to discuss any journal entries that we came up with, which should have been discussed during field work, as well as any areas, uh, any management comments or room for improvement that we came up with. Um, I'm also going to talk about transitioning to a new auditor. As you know, this is a time-intensive area. There's a lot of requests that come with having a new audit firm. Um, we try to make the transition as smooth as possible. Our staff, our partners and managers have all worked on a number of transitions, so we're well aware that it could be difficult if not done correctly. So we try to eliminate any redundancies and try to, our planning meetings and preliminary field work, try to get what we can while we're on site so that we're not bombarding with emails and back and forth. Um, we ensure that our audit team is on the same page so that we're not requesting for the same piece of information twice or three times. We set up our permanent file to ensure that any significant contracts or agreements or any items that will help us gain an understanding of your operations, we maintain that from year to year so that we're not, once again, we're not asking for the same thing two years in a row or three years in a row. It allows our audit team to stay on track with expiring contracts as well so that we know to look out for certain things if something is coming to an end. And we submit our requests for information through a secure online portal. And this does a lot to help with eliminating double requests of items. It allows us the audit team as well as the client team to track the status of engagements. What it does is we'll send a listing to you and anyone who, anyone on the client's team who has access to the portal, which you can determine who the best individuals are, has a view of the items and the status of the items. So if something has been requested and not submitted, it would be noted as outstanding still. It kind of gives everyone, both the audit team as well as the client team, an overview of what the progress of the audit is and as things are checked off you can see that the engagement is closer to finishing so um, and that's a secure online portal so it allows us also to share documents with the client so if there's a request that was similar to a prior year we can upload what was provided in the past this, this will help everyone in preparing for the audit to ensure that we're obtaining the right information and we're not missing something that has already been uploaded. Um, so are, we, are you ready for questions now? Sure, that'd be fine. Okay, all right. So I'm going to go around the table and give each one of our board members and also our business manager and uh, director of services an opportunity to ask questions. And just in the interest of fairness, I encourage people to ask similar questions to uh, the ones you have in the past. Uh, don't have to be exact, but you can add. But, uh, I think we want to get some of the same information out. So, um, Tim, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, I'm part of it. Really a thorough explanation of the process, so thank you about that. Uh, uh, how many days that does that incorporate uh, on-site days do you think that that for an organization of our size? For <clears throat> preliminary field work, we're typically on-site about one day, and then final field work we usually schedule up to a week, oh. um, two to three days. The first year might take a little longer. I'm good. I, I, I enjoyed the presentation. I wait to, to see what the the other folks, uh, business manager, director, and so on, in their discussion plan. Okay. Right. Um, I was just wondering if you have any type of um, training um, throughout the year for um, for our. Um, to everyone here at Miles, or if you come out just for best practices, you know, just give everyone a breast on maybe hot topics. Perfect, perfect segue into the last piece of, of what was in this PowerPoint presentation. It's about 10 pages back, there's a page that says training opportunities. So to your point, I mean, our best client is our best educated client. So we provide seminars and training for all of our clients throughout the year that's complimentary. Um, some of the ones in the past have been revolved around significant accounting and financial reporting standards that GASB has issued, the most recent being uh, GASB 75 related to other post-employment benefits. We did a 
a webinar for all of our clients on, on that presentation. We did a hands-on seminar for um, our clients uh, many years ago when the, the new requirements for um, if you present a statistical section. Um, but even, even more so than that, um, that those trainings are complementary, uh, but then also um, I would expect to be hearing from folks you know, throughout the year with questions. Uh, so, for example, if we have a, a complex transaction that the library hasn't had before, I, you know, we, we love to field those calls so things get recorded properly the first time, rather than when we arrive you know, for the audit, oh, forgot to tell you, the, you know, that kind of thing. So those are all um, you know, things that are welcome, that communication. We, the audit, folks think of the audit as being like the three to five days during final field work because that's when you're looking at all the numbers. We think of the, the relationship as being a year-round relationship and the audit is just a function of that relationship. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, um, I noticed you mentioned that um, you have an audit team assigned to us. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my, one of my concerns is I know in firms when you have so many clients, um, if people are switched to a different company or if there's <coughs> absentees, our audit team would still be intact so we can always be assured that you'd be able to provide us with the team we need to um, fill our audit, that's a concern I have. <clears throat> Good question. So um, I would serve as the engagement partner for the library. Uh, Martha would be the engagement manager. Um, and then um, if for some reason something happened to me, that I became ill or sick, we have four other partners that could fill in for me. But the, you know, with the same thing being for Martha, um, that there's others that are capable of stepping in, but our process is to keep continuity from year to year. So there's not going to be changes on those key levels in the team without discussing and having it approved by, you know, by you all first. Okay, great. And then um, I, I just had another question. I was wondering um, what about the Niles Main Library that you found uh, would be a reason to want to consider us as a potential client? Um, that's a very good question. So, in reviewing your financial statements, um, you're very well funded, um, and um, the last couple of years, making additional contributions to voluntary cont contributions to IMRF, you know, kind of stands out. Um, so, you're a very well funded library. Um, we have a lot of we have a lot of other clients, um, both libraries and uh, municipalities in this area as well. This is a, a target market of of Sikich, so um, you really fit the um, you know, fit the typical, you know, sick target of sickage client. Okay, great. And then I have one other question. It's, it's incidental, but are you the only sickage firm in the area? Or did your name change? Like, was it ever sickage and something else? Once upon, when, we, when I first started with the firm, we were sickage gardener. Okay, so that's some old information. Sickage gardener, okay. sickage gardener then became sickage. Okay, great. Thank Jim Sickage and Jerry Gardner started the firm. Okay. Jerry Gardner um, left public accounting, and then we just changed the name to just be Sickert. Oh, fine. I was just wondering, is there yep. another one out there? Or There's not you... another one out there. All right, there. well, thank you for that. <clears throat> okay. okay. No, thank you. I, I'm listening. Okay, thank you. Hi, um, I'm looking on uh, the audit approach page. The last line has a statement about fraud questionnaires sent to the Board of Trustees. What's that all about? So part of the required audit standards requires us to discuss fraud risks with management. So our approach to that is to send a questionnaire, it's a pretty brief questionnaire, just to gain an understanding of how management communicates regarding uh, potential fraud risks and how, in, how abreast you are of internal control procedures and any areas of concern that you may have to share that with us and it's a, it's a confidential survey that we would send out to you that allows us to then review your responses and tailor our, our audit procedures to any areas of concern that you may have. Okay, that's interesting. And are there any other times that you communicate with the board rather than... <coughs> so we would communicate with the board 
both at the beginning of the process. So if you, if you were to approve our proposal this evening, the first way we would communicate to the board is that we would issue an engagement letter consistent with our proposal, which outlines essentially what our contract is for that fiscal year. Um, throughout the process, you'd probably be getting communication through your director and business manager. And then at the end of the process, we would present the final audit report um, to the board, or if you have a separate finance committee, to the finance committee. Okay, I don't know if I heard wrong, but I thought you said something about reviewing board minutes. Correct. So, you look at the entire year? We look at the years of board okay. minutes because that's where key financial decisions that are made are, are, are approved by the board. So. If there's ordinances like your tax levy ordinance, your appropriation ordinance, those are okay. you know obvious ones during the year. But if there's other ordinances or resolutions that are adopted during the year that have a financial impact, then we would request those as well. Okay. I didn't realize that. So say you say you made a decision to transfer money from your general fund to your special reserve fund, you probably would take action at the board level. Mm -hmm. So we would tie that transaction that mm -hmm. you approve because it's usually a significant one into the financial records to make sure that it had been recorded in accordance with what the board approved. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And one last thing, why should we pick you? Because we're going to have a number of people. Why should you pick Sickich? I yeah. think the reason you should pick Sickich is because of our expertise in the state and local government industry. Uh, we're, to be a Sickich client is, if you talk to other libraries and library districts, they would tell you that they have the experts. So we're always the ones that are at the forefront of the industry, kind of leading the way, um, both in, in Illinois and across the country. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Greg, who's our business manager, you have a question or two? Hi. Um, yeah, I was wondering, you know, in your work, uh, many times you're the auditor, sometimes you're doing the monthly work. Mm -hmm. Um, helping libraries, you know, kind of get through their reporting to the board and so forth. Uh, but, you know, having put those shoes on, what do you see as challenges to, uh, you know, to a library district? Challenges to a library district, I think um, that the, um, in the state of Illinois with tax caps, um, the libraries and library districts um, and I put probably fire protection districts in the same category, are very, very well funded and manage their operations very well. But you also have a limit where, you, where, the, where the challenge becomes is you, with those limited resources, if you want to do a big capital project, you're limited to what you can save in your special reserve. Because in this day and age, there's not a lot of Referend the percentage of referendums that pass to issue debt to do those projects is probably a lot less than when I first started um, in the local government industry. So I think I think the challenges are really funding your capital and thinking past that one-year budget cycle. A lot of our clients are really good at the one-year budget cycle and sometimes struggle with the three to five years. Um, from an elected official standpoint, sometimes looking at that three to five years if you're not continuing your term, maybe thinking past when you're even going to be working, you know, with with the community or the, the district that you're at. So I think that's really the biggest challenge um, that I see with you know, libraries and library districts. But I think that um, if you look at um, if, if you look at other library financial statements, you'll see there's a lot of libraries that are doing very well with the resources that they have in terms of managing those funds and and being operate structurally in balance is what I would call that, so that you have some dollars that are going into fund balance in your general fund so that you can afford to fund some of those capital projects. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. okay, I'll just ask one more question. Have you ever had a situation where you felt that you needed to contact the board directly because you suspected some fraud existed or there was something else seriously amiss? And how did you handle that situation? <clears throat> it has been rare, but it has occurred. Um, so, you know, we kind of outline that in our proposal. So it's always, you're always going at least one level above where the suspected fraud may have occurred. So if it's at the director level, we're coming to the board. If it's at the business manager level, we're going to the director, but likely going with the director to the board as well. 
those types of situations need to be handled very um, sensitively. And um, so we would, you know, obviously be in touch with, you know, the starting point would be the president of the board, um, and um, then we would, you know, work with you um, to discuss the issue, discuss what else, you know, potentially needed to be done. Maybe we didn't have, you know, we always want to make sure we have all the facts. So we get a lot of information from both the board and from staff about where do you think there's risks in the system. Um, and we, like Martha said, we tailor our uh, you know, assessment of risk to that, and that's in, in a couple cases very infrequently that, that some of those things have arisen. Okay. Does anyone have any follow-up questions? All right, fine. Then we all want to thank you very much for uh, yes, joining us this evening. Well, you. thank you very much for having us. And uh, we, uh, we'll be discussing this matter more later in our meeting, so okay. we wanted to invite you in now so that you can leave Great. and enjoy the rest of the evening. Well, thank you very much. Thanks very much for coming. And we look forward to hearing from you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. While well, we're uh, getting situated here, I'm just going to bring one more matter to everyone's attention. Which did everyone see today from Niles Journal? No. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is Dave. Perhaps you can speak to us. Uh, an industrial crane going right over the Nailsman District yeah. Library on Friday. Hoisted two air conditioning chiller units off the building. Oh, hey, oh, hey great! <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how you got oh, us oh, today. Wow. I did read it. Put, put, put on Greg's shoulder and he carried us. How many of you hoisted it in my mailbox yet? Where did they take this picture from? Do you know? They're on the roof with Greg. Greg made the mistake of going on the roof. Uh, so Tom Rob was out. Uh, you know, Tom Rob uh, said, uh, I'd sure like to know when they're putting this on the roof. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll give you a call. And we had some fits and starts, you know, and um, as to tell he had uh, scheduled it, but for whatever reason, you know, they, had, uh, they decided that wasn't a good time. So, of course, on Friday, they came out and I called Tom and you know, he came running out and he's taking pictures. He goes, Can I go in the room? <laughs> and I checked with Susan and she said, Yeah, that's fine. So, um, the good sport that I am, I followed Tom up onto the roof. And uh, I had a little bit of vertigo, so I wasn't too close to the edge. <laughs> but, you know, I, I wasn't exactly uh, shaking or anything. Uh, getting down was a trick. You know, there's an arc to it because. You place your hand here, and you place your other hand here, and you swing your leg, and you have faith it's going to hit the rung. Yeah. And uh, these guys, you know, these guys are scrambling up and down, the, you know, the access portal, and you wouldn't believe, and, you know, it was not the same for me and Todd. And then, <laughs> and then I called Susan, and I said, okay, so here's an important thing to know. If I'm asking permission for something like that, the answer is always <laughs> I think I need the crane to get me off the <laughs> You know, and, and the amazing thing, I don't, I don't think it says that in the article, I haven't read it closely, but one of the statistics that they uh, provided me and I provided to Tom was that uh, the crane was out at 9 approximately and left around 2 o'clock or so. Yeah. But there was only six minutes of actual rock rain time. Isn't that something? Yeah, wow. so, I mean, the preparation sure. is deep and full, and, you know, they're very careful. Um, and we had uh, three trucks on site, you know, the, the crane itself, and then a support vehicle, because it's carrying counterweights, and, mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and the block that goes on the end, you know, as well as the pads. Each pad was about six by six. And, uh, and then the third truck had the equipment on it. And of course we had the, you know, the garbage, uh, uh, the salvage. Yes. Uh, the salvage <laughs> out there. They had two trucks, one for the, you know, big half of the unit and one for the small half. It so mentions thing. here that portions of the library under where the crane was lifting chillers were cleared of patrons as a precaution. And in place. <laughs> and in place. And in place. And if you're working with straps and you don't know, know how well that strap yeah. is. You know, and, and it was relatively calm, you know, from a wind perspective on, uh, you know, on the deck. But once you got up there, things were swinging a little bit. And maybe that was just my vertigo. But, uh, you know, they uh, they really were careful and, and uh, you know, trying to make sure that 
Okay, all right. Thank you. So uh, we'll return now to our regular agenda item where we left off. That would be number four. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of January 16, 2019? Maddie? Moved. Second? By Linda? All right. Any comments or questions about this? I have a couple. Let's see. Um, page four of the regular board minutes. Um, <coughs> under regular board meeting on December 19th, the paragraph where um, President Diamond referred to the revised minutes on the table. It's the very first page. Am I in the wrong? No. I'm, here, I'm looking right at you. Say, did you say oh. December 19th? Yeah, no, the, it's the title. It's the, it oh, says I'm under sorry. where it okay. says regular board okay. minutes of 19th. Okay. Well, it's the last sentence where it says, um, response to Trustee Derblick's suggestion for, I would like to ask you to insert a budget line, the word insert a budget line for hospitality expenses. Okay. All right. Does the movement and seconder accept that amendment? Yeah, I guess. Can you say that again? I'm sorry. Oh, I asked if you would insert, what I said was, um, my suggestion was a budget line for hospitality expenses. So if you could just include a budget line. Yes. That was my question. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, page six. <coughs> um, under the chapter one, um, Topic, Trustee Derblick um, said she doesn't think that right there. Um, yeah, the the one the third sentence it ends with to the newsletter. And my other um, comment was or prefer an online version. Remember, I asked to have um, some sort of. Um, questionnaire and the three questions were these two and then the last one was or prefer an online version um, remember we're talking about chapter one being mailed to people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm sorry I'm not sure what you're suggesting should be done under new business under chapter one there's a paragraph that begins trustee Durbley right on the third line <laughs> third line what it ends in newsletter yeah I'm asking semicolon or prefer an online version. An it. online version of what exactly? Oh, chapter online. one, an online version of chapter one, an online chapter one version. Remember, okay. rather than get yeah, rather than just say online version. Okay. Well, I took you it know, off. I thought it was too wordy. All right, you're right. You're right. Or prefer an online chapter one version. If we could just add that. Uh, well, I'm going to ask the movement and seconder if uh, they agree to that change. Sure. Uh, it's fine to be. You know, I remember her talking about the okay. online chapter one, so. Okay, thank you. That's it. Okay, fine. All right, so we uh, have a motion on the floor uh, as amended by the suggestions made by Trustee Durblick. Uh, would you please do a roll call stand for approving uh, the minutes? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Chen? Yes. Okay, now we turn to public comment, and we do a request for public comment. Uh, Mr. Doty, would you like to step up here? Good evening, everybody. Uh, last week or last month, many of you were a little hesitant on having these auditing companies coming in. You were concerned about questioning them, I think you, number one, you invited them, invited them to come in, and I think that was a great idea on your part. I also heard many questions from you folks, uh, and that was kind of the opposite of the month before. I don't know what I'm going to ask them, but you had a lot of great questions, so I could commend you for that, and I think you did a great job. Um, what I wanted to talk about tonight uh, is last last month uh, 
I uh, spoke about public comments. I was presently, uh, I was very surprised at the fact you were already in the midst of reviewing and bringing that policy up to date. Uh, but that was good to hear. Uh, I would like to, uh, uh, Susan was kind enough to send me those, uh, the old, uh, the lawyer and the revised, or the recommended, and I really appreciate that, Susan. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, say, you know, there, there is, there was a, uh, a policy that does state, well, let me roll back for just a second. My comment about the, the, the policy was, we may, we sit up here or stand up here and make uh, comments or uh, have questions, and you gave us silence and a thank you. Uh, I don't think that's appropriate. And I find in the old policy and the new that you actually can make statements or uh, the president can make a statement or the director can make a statement. So that's good that we did that review because I think it's, it's, it's all a good thing. Uh, I would like to expand on that a little bit in what you can, you, you, other words, you can answer a question yes or no or make a, uh, 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 make a brief statement about what, you know, about the person's concern rather than, you know, leaving that silence. So answer yes, no, uh, a brief statement about your concern, or recommend that you make an appointment with you to, you know, discuss this further. So I'd like to, if you put that into the policy, that gives a little more flexibility. And uh, because, you know, to come here and stand here and have a discussion with you or make comments it's, you know, it takes a lot for a, a person to do that. And to get nothing was not good. So thank you for, for doing that, you know, revising that policy and bringing it up to date. Uh, there's one other thing that I, I'd like to uh, suggest is maybe adopt the Niles, uh, our city of Niles uh, uh, comment policy where uh, during the meeting, uh, where you discuss issues, and uh, just before uh, you know, you do a roundtable of discussion, and your next step is to vote. Well, at that time, uh, the city will may ask if there's any public comment about that discussion. I would like to see this board uh, take, you know, uh, uh, had that uh, had that policy here also that uh, if someone is here, they can make a comment just before you vote. So those are the only uh, things that I think uh, I'd like for you to, re to uh, consider. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Did I say your name right? Is it Dodi? Steve Dodi. Steve Dodi is, I answered both of them. <laughs> no problem at all. All right. Thank you very much for your comments thank you. today. I expect we'll discuss this more later during that section of the board meeting. All right. Um, that was the only request that I had for public participation. I don't think we have to do it. Okay. Um, okay. Fine. So we will now turn to the treasurer's report. Yeah? Okay, um, so before I make the report, I, I do want to say something about the treasurer's report. I have um, kind of revised this over the years, but um, if anybody has any any thoughts on how we can make it better or any changes they would like, you know, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, I, I've noticed that other organizations do it differently. Um, they report on different aspects. And, uh, you know, it's not saying so. Uh, all right. Um, January is our seventh month of the fiscal year, and we're 58.33% of the way through our budget. And the library's overall expenditures are 54% of the total budget. So we're doing good. Uh, there is very, again, as we had in very um, many of our previous meetings, there's not that much to report on. Uh, page nine, the revenues are in line with expectations, and our salaries are on budget. Our page 10 library materials are running slightly over, but we had talked about that before. It's due to their subscription-based costs. 
Uh, our expenditures are running well under budget at 47%. Great. Uh, I'm sorry, our library operating expenditures. Uh, page 11, our general administration uh, is running 49%, well under budget again. And I, I have really no items to note on page 12. And we had talked about worker compensation and unemployment line items in previous meetings as well. So uh, all in all, it's very um, uneventful budget, uh, uneventful monthly expenditures, which is, again, very good uh, thing to report. Thank you, Tim, for your You're report welcome. and for the, the written report that you prepared, too. And uh, I want to know if anyone have any questions uh, about the uh, treasurer's report. Not I'll then retain your motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $216,503.93, payroll expenses of $290,076.55 for a total monthly expense of $506,580.48. Do I have such a motion? Motion. Betty? Second. All right. Any questions or discussions about this? And I'll take a roll call. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Next item on the agenda Can is... Can I just make one comment? What is your comment? Um, um, I just wanted to state that, as you are all aware, I vote no to our monthly spending. Yes, but I wanted to mention that since I voted no to our $7.3 million total spending budget for 2018-19, because it lacked any budget review process or justification, I cannot approve the monthly increments of this spending either. Because I know um, we sort of forget how that all happened. But I just wanted to make that statement. Thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda is the director's report. Susan. All right, um, we have a big agenda, so I am not going to go through very much here. We're going to whip along, but I do have a couple of things to report on. Um, I, as you know, we have got some patron complaints about the teens and the noise that they create. Mm -hmm. um, we have so many teens using the space now that the adults that are in nearby proximity don't enjoy that all time. And so we have taken some steps to try to improve that situation. Um, we have added, uh, and by we I mean they, has added <laughs> a, vinyl, a vinyl cover on part of the windows so that it, um, you know, the computers are at eye level with teen underground and so it kind of blocks that out. It's a little shimmery looking. It's, it's not fabulous, but at least it lowers the temperature a little bit where you don't have quite so many adults looking and being disapproving of the adult, of the teens and the teens looking back and laughing at the adults. So, so I didn't notice that. Maybe we could take a walk over there after the meeting. You sure. Point out yeah. what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Does that affect the sound level at all? That does not help with the sound. No, it's really just a I visual. Yeah. yeah. But we did do one thing to affect the sound, which is IT and Dave moved the computers that had been on the glass wall deeper into the room yeah. so, so that you don't have them right there where the sound could go through. And that has also helped quite a bit. And then Dave was experimenting a little bit with sound absorbing panels on the ceiling, but you know, I want them to look nice, so there's some work. So yeah. We're still working on that a little bit. Um, and then the last thing, of course, is to continue working with the teen librarians on how to you know, manage the teens in that space and how to work with them. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I feel like they're, they are trying very hard. And um, so you know, it's some improvement. I, mean, I don't think we did get as many complaints about it this month. So. So I'll take that. Um, I wanted to be sure that you remember that our 60th anniversary is coming up in April. We are planning a VIP party on April 12th, um, to which, of course, all of you will be invited, and um, people from the village, and then we would like to invite some of the people who used to work here and former trustees to come as well. And uh, so next month, you will we'll be bringing a motion to approve serving alcohol at that event so that we can get a permit from the village. Okay. Um, and then the last April thing, what day is it? Uh, it's April 12th, it's a Friday, Friday after hours. Meaning what time? I'm sorry, I don't remember, but you'll be getting invitations soon. Okay. Because it's, I have to arrange babysitting. Yeah. Well, you got a couple months for it. <laughs> Thank you. And then um, I just wanted to highlight on page 42 of my director's report, 
or a packet, and it's in the director's report, the proposed budget calendar for the coming year, which is very much like it was last year. Um, and, and it's you know, very much subject to what the board wants to do. You can change your mind on things and move things forward or backwards, whatever you want to do. But this is what we have in mind at this time. Does anybody have any questions for me? Um, I had just a, a few. On page 29, regarding the um, video update, um, do you know if that video link's been um, set up yet? I tried. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's a little picture on the next page that shows you where exactly to look for that. If, well, if I followed the directions, it said that you go onto the um, agenda and agenda packet, and if you click on those, you will, um, let's see, what are so you're on our website. Yes. You go to agenda um, and agenda packet. Uh huh. And um, and you, click the, on you will now see a link that says video. Mm -hmm. I didn't see a video link. Okay. So is it? Well, it, the picture here is how it should be looking. Okay. Well, I tr I'll try it again. Okay. All right. right. But we actually appreciated that suggestion. That was a good suggestion, and mm -hmm. uh, they were able to implement it quite quickly. Wow. Yes, yes, thank you. That, that, I think that is yeah, good. There was a good really good suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. And then I had. Um, oh yes, page forty-two. Um, the proposed budget calendar. Yeah. On March eighth, it says the first draft of budget request due to director and business manager. Correct. Now last year. Um, when we tried to get into a budget process, I had requested that we create a budget review process of our spending rather than just increase our budget amounts by what everyone requested. Um, are we going to come up with some type of review process for the current year before we even entertain what we're doing the following year? Well, uh, Greg has just sent out to all of the supervisors their expenses to uh, uh, up to this point for them to analyze and figure out um, if they need to do more or less in the coming year. Um, Could we get that in the form of a department operating budget? Well, that's we, we went through this all last year, and, and I think we ultimately decided not to do the budget by departments. Well, actually, no, I think last year we learned that Greg wasn't receiving department operating budgets, even though every year it's stated he was. Well, he, he does, but they aren't in a form that would be turned over to the board. Those are documents that are sent to us. But then again, needs. okay, just to clarify, because I want to make sure we're all on the same page, when I asked you about what that meant, what you receive from the departments are their requests for what they want. There's no review of spending whatsoever. But they Greg don't. receives these requests on a little sheet of paper or as he walks through the library talking to these different departments, they share this with them. So I understand why this paperwork varies, but again, it's not a, it's not a department operating budget. I mean, in order to have a budget process, you have to review your spending. They do review their spending. We and never and see and any review. No, you don't. From you. you don't see that. But Why we shouldn't see that? it? Well, it's a board decision, right? No, it's that well. No, works. actually, reviewing the budget by department. Each department should be here in a board meeting discussing their. And it's a year. Dis it's a decision that the board makes. I think last year we voted. Yeah, we did. To no, last year you didn't like my explanation right, we for a review to do for a budget right. review process. So I asked all of you. What type of budget review process would, process would you accept? We voted None of you wanted to be bothered. What we, we were going wow. to and you moved on. Done. So we ended up with no budget review process. Therefore, I did not we vote yes. a separate meeting for budget review. I know, but see, you think because Greg gives us a piece of paper with all these numbers, that's a review process. Each department has staffing, each department has programs. There's, there's, a re, there's actually a thorough review process that should be happening. And it's called, usually, a department operating budget, where we could see everything they do. So I just wondered, since we didn't accomplish this last year, were you planning to at least reconsider it for this year? You know, we did have an extensive discussion about this last year, and um, I think we decided at that time that we do want to continue doing this the way we have in the past, that is, 
let the individual departments present the budget, uh, request that they need, and outline the savings that they can realize and the funds that they need for the future year, to have that submitted to Greg and to Susan, let them distill it, and then provide an overall budget to us. Then when we get the overall budget, we do go through it and we look at each item, we compare it to, to what we spent this past year, and look at it in terms of what we need to spend the next year. Sometimes the amounts don't nicely break down into one department or another. The expenses are spread across different departments, and that was a problem, too, of trying to get each department to outline exactly what it needs. That is, the depart some departments, all the departments use marketing, don't they? It, can, they can that be attributed to one single department? No. And there were another of other instances we had where you couldn't really break down Supplies. exactly which department was using which fund, who uses the electricity, well, how much, you know, how many pa how much paper is each department using, and, and so the type of breakdown that you were in part looking for last year we, was something we decided was not really practical to do. Uh, and that's why we determined last year that we would continue with the process that we've used in the past in terms of getting a budget for the entire library and then looking over the entire budget as opposed to piecemeal going through department by department. Well, well, not piecemeal, but every department should be able to stand on its own two feet and identify what they do. Well, then you take your budget number and incorporate all your departments to come up with that total. It's it's not impractical, but it's your call. If you don't care to have a review process of our current spending to move forward and analyze it, that's fine. Okay. We do have a review process. It might not be the one that you want or you envision, but we do have a review okay, process. Okay, you don't read anything, anything from this library. There isn't a, a document That's your opinion. submitted. That's your opinion. Well, I would like to see a document that you consider a review of spending in this library. Well, we could, we could not, not just a document, but special meeting placeholders for, for money. But you do review the expenses every, every single, single month. month. It's not what I'm asking. Yeah, and they're here. broken out by the I was just going to say the same thing, Susan. Do you understand month. what a budget process is? It's not just a list of checks you write. It's a lot more than that. But you say you want to review spending, and this is where you review the spending. Oh, That's absolutely on a not. monthly basis. Absolutely not. Talk to any bookkeeper, any any audit, any uh, finance manager. They will tell you there's a process when it comes to reviewing your past, your budgets. I have the, my the, budget. The village does right. it. The school districts do it. Well, no sense in voting on a motion. You all disagree. I'm just, I'm asking a simple question. We have no review process last year. No sense, Do you plan on changing it? That was my question. Right. So the there is no pertinent motion on the floor right now. No, it was just a question, and I and I got my feedback. So thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is twenty. I had one more question about page forty-three, and it has to do with safety and OSHA compliance. Um, it mentions that 24 staff members will receive bloodborne pathogen protocol training on February 14th. So um, I had a couple questions. What type of training is this? Is it computer module? Is it someone coming in? It was somebody coming in. Okay. And then I was wondering why 24 staff members? Well, the, I think these were all people that had done the first set of first aid training. It, we have. We had the first aid training, we had the AED training, and now we've had the bloodborne pathogen training. So are all employees going to be? No. Um, it's primarily for the people that might be likely to encounter uh, bloodborne injury. Uh, Dave's department all had to do it, for example. Um, but yeah, it's 24 have done it so far. You know, if the board wants everybody well, here's in the building to be trained, they could be. Out of 108 employees, or close to 108, only 24 of your employees interact with the public? Of course not. Okay, that's why I'm, I'm surprised everyone's not having bloodborne pathogen training. Can I, I would think you, we would be happy that we finally yeah. had bloodborne pathogen training. Oh, I didn't know you never had it before. Never I thought it was an office. Uh, yeah. We've never had it at my office. I, I don't, I'm impressed that you had it at all. 
Oh, yes, Patty. Oh, well, Patty. you're impressed? Okay. Um, working wait in a minute, a, I think Patty's got the uh, board. Working now. in a public place, a school, mm -hmm. where we have more than 100 employees, uh, we don't have, we have a nurse, we have an emergency team that goes. We don't have everybody trained, teachers, teachers' aides, safety monitors, whatever. They are not all trained in any of the first aid stuff you're speaking of. So uh, to say you've got all of these people dealing with the public, they should all be trained, I think is a little overkill. Well, actually, I worked for a school district, and every employee went through several training procedures. They were computer module, but bloodborne pathogen was key. Oh, yeah, we go through and the computer stuff. Through some we sort go of training. through the, that's yeah, state runners. law. We go through that. So, but as far as hands on, like they're doing, no. Well, we it's don't not care. much different in terms of what you're trained on a computer or with an individual. What I'm well, saying yeah, is, yeah, we had gloves to put on, and right. it, it was all it was interactive. Oh, no, it was we learned that on the computer as well. But what I'm saying is, so you will have some employees here who won't have, won't know what to do, and they'll have to find one of the 24. Is that what you're saying? Well, isn't that like half of our full-time employees? It, it means that at any given time in the building, somebody is going to be, well, all, I mean, since all of Dave's work, it, you would always call Dave's people in that kind of situation anyway, but it means that there are more people now that will know what to do. And what, more importantly, almost what not to do. Yes, that's my, that's my other concern, that you're, you have some sort of training in place for your employees to know what not to do, because, I mean, they're right there. Yeah, okay, yeah. I was just wondering uh, why 24. Okay, well, that's my last question. Thank you. Okay, Susan, communications. I noticed we have a letter from the Niles Township Government in the food pantry. Uh, were these toys that collected by the staff? For the it, was just, it was a collection box in oh, the yes. vestibule. Okay. And, yeah, they, and they got quite full of them. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Thank you for all the individuals who donated toys for that. Before you uh, move on, can I ask a question about that? About the Niles about Township the Government. Who is that? Where are they located? Skokie. So it's um, the Niles. It's called Niles Township Government. It's I just it's like Niles Township, Main Township. Yeah. It's, it's so the, it's their municipality that did this? No, it's Niles, Niles Township. Township. It's the township. township that did it. Like Main Township is up in Park Ridge and Niles Township is in Skokie. Well, it's usually and our called, district is in both of those. Right. right. But it's usually called like the main township municipality is where they sort of spearhead all this. So is that what they meant? No, it's a different one. No. It's, it's no. The, it was Niles Township that was collecting toys. Is that who our food pantry is with? Is the Niles Township? No. no. It is we have, the we one that I'm saying is over by by the senior center. Um, Excuse me, where are they located? Mm -hmm. Do you kind of about to? I think Maybe? I'm thinking. Like the yeah, it's Maybe. the municipality. Maybe. That's what it is. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, I know where it is. Okay, thank you. As far as news and reports, it doesn't appear we have anything from the Friends Legislative or Rails. I guess Rails are oh, I'm sorry. Hey, hey, Carolyn, I had asked you to find out oh, yes. what the current. Um, um, how much money the front has? Have you uh, ascertained? No, that? and I I responded that you should write a letter from this board and ask them. Aren't, aren't you a member? Don't you? Yes, know but this that? board is requesting that information, and I think you already knew um, how much money they had because your question to me was what are they going to do with it. Wow. Well, so I suggested that you uh, create, you know, could you find out how much they have? Well, I'd rather you do that because we haven't had a meeting, and I think two months ago you were going to send a letter to them. No, I wasn't going to do anything. Yeah, this whole board. Remember um, that. Do you know the when suggestion? they're going to have another meeting? Well, I'm I'm going to assume when the weather um, gets better, they should be having one shortly. Would you find out for us next meeting when they're going to have one? What What do you want to know? In our next meeting, would you report as to when they're going to have another meeting? Well, as soon as I find out they have a meeting, I'll let you know. But it should be coming up. I think they're off for two winter months, so I think they go back in March. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so Susan, did you say there's something from Rails? Yeah, I had a couple things from Rails. So okay. They had a meeting a couple weeks ago, last month, I guess. Um, they talked about um, the state library. Jesse White um, wants libraries to be involved in the 2020 census. 
and being helpful in that process in whatever ways we can. And so I contacted the village to see what they were doing and to just make sure that they knew that we would be, you know, more than happy to work with them on whatever they're doing. Um, because, you know, we have computers and we have people here who can, you know, are very skilled at helping people to fill out forms and this will be almost a completely online survey this time. So I just let them know that we would be happy to work with them. We certainly don't want to be working, you know, not knowing what the other is doing. So at least we'll be communicating back and forth. So, so are they going to set up some type, some type of uh, communication saying this is what we want? I mean, I would expect that they'll have some type of list of requests. Uh, uh, yeah, she mentioned that she's trying to uh, pull together something going out to each of the potential partners, but we haven't gotten very far in that yet. Mm -hmm. But we've made that we've reached out for the first time. Okay. Since that's what they uh, we heard that they were wanting the library studio. And then um, also, there's going to be a new museum pass program uh, called Explore More Illinois that will be launching in April. And it is a web-based product, so people don't have to come physically into the library to pick up passes like they do now with the Museum Adventure Pass. We'll still be using the Museum Adventure Pass because it's different things, but Explore More Illinois will be no charge to any of the libraries, um, and they're still you know, kind of trying to recruit more cultural institutions to be part of it, but it is coming if we are going to be in the first wave of the rollout. So I was happy to get us onto that list. So that's all I have for rates. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much. All right. Now, back on our agenda for uh, the 10 new business. And of course, we've already conducted the interview with Lada Buck and Edmund and also with Sikich. Sikich? Yes. And um, are the, are, um, I've just been given something by Dan, auditing firm proposal evaluation. Is this the same thing yes. that was sent out to us? Yeah. Okay. All right. Actually, uh, this was what was sent out by email earlier. And Greg, I'm glad to see, Greg, that this is in color. Because, yes. because when I printed it out, <laughs> this is what I got, and this made no sense at all. So um, I'm glad to see that these are in black and red, too, because that makes a big difference. Thank you. All right. So this, uh, after we okay. were uh, discussing these firms at our last meeting, we did ask you, Greg, to come up with a matrix. And I see that you, you know, really compared them in a lot of different respects and created this uh, analysis of uh, different types of factors, um, one through, was it 12? Right yes. Say, one through 12, and rated them um, in different ways. I mean, there are many the same questions, but they're sort of graphically illustrated different ways. So did you want to start by going through this? Oh, uh, sure. I can uh, provide some okay. opening comments about it. Okay. Um, so the uh, uh, the 12 characteristics that we looked at um, were a direct lift from the uh, request for proposal that we had posted mm -hmm. and sent out. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so what I did was uh, I looked at each um, I looked at each proposal critically within these, uh, and how these 12 steps or these 12 issues uh, apply to them. Um, what, I, um, what I found was that in some cases um, there was full compliance, and those generally got a, a red ball, which is the highest uh, amount. Uh, in some cases, it was neutral. Um, neutral was a black ball, and then I'm sorry. Neutral was a um, uh, was a circle, and sometimes it was no compliance at all, and which necessitated a black ball. Um, Carolyn, you had asked earlier about client retention, and specifically for client retention, number five, uh, the instruction was identify the five largest clients your firm or office has lost in the past three years, and the reasons also discuss in instances uh, where the loss of the client was due to an unresolved auditing or accounting matter, the process of attempting to resolve the issues. So um, for our uh, two firms, Lauterbach and Sikich, um, I gave them 
black balls because they did not supply a list. So they did not comply in any respect to the request for number five. So uh, they didn't even comply. Oh. Yeah. Um, you know, by contrast, um, Brian Zabel did and Pete Cress and Orr did. Uh, and uh, McClure, I can't remember specifically what their uh, what their circumstance was, but you know, in my in my judgment, it was a neutral, so it was a circle. So we went through um, each one of them. Some of them had um, you know pretty robust uh, discussions about approach, for example, um, and then some mentioned approach but didn't really you know dive into it to the same uh, to the same level. Um, so once I created this, you know, this matrix with these uh, with these various walls, um, you know, I, I was trying to figure out what exactly to do with them, <laughs> and so I came up with, you know, with uh, the first measure, which, okay, so if you uh, got a red ball, uh, how many red balls did you get out of uh, twelve possible? And that's what you see at the top of page mm -hmm. four. Uh, Lauterbach uh, had nine, Sick had seven, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then, um, you know, I thought, well, okay, so maybe what we could do is actually assign a numeric value to the balls. You know, black is, um, you know, uh, black is one and red is five and, and, and gradations in between. Um, although, you know, I was a little hesitant to do that because I did not want to create a sense of, uh, uh, I did not want to create a sense of false precision. So when you have something that's qualitative and you look at it, uh, assigning a 4.6 to it implies that there's some sort of objective measurement that arrives at 4.6. But I did it anyway. And, <laughs> and on the bottom of page four uh, is, the, uh, is the matrix reduced to numbers. Um, so if you look at the raw scores, you know, just adding up, you know, um, five for red and, and so forth. Um, you know, we have uh, Lauterbach, McClure, Sickich, Teague, and Zabel uh, up on the top of uh, page five. It's, <coughs> it's the ranking under raw score. Uh, I also carry forward the ranking under price uh, as well, which is what we did at the, at the initial meeting. And I thought, well, maybe um, maybe there's a way to weight these, you know. And um, the easiest weighting scale is since we have 12 items to weight one through 12. So you know, it, it, you know, it's kind of an interesting exercise. You know, it's like looking at things. What do you think is the most important thing? It's easy to come up with the most important, which would be their independence. Um, and then you know, what doesn't matter is much might be client retention uh, and so forth. So you go through um, go through that exercise and then you take your weighting and you apply it to each one of each one of the scores um, you know in each category and what you end up with uh, down at the bottom of page six is under weighted score you got Lauterbeck, Sickich, McClure, T and Zabel. So Lauterbach is continuing to come up at the top. Um, and then on page seven, um, I call I called four uh, references for Lauterbach and four uh, for Sikic. And I went through and asked them all the same questions, basically. And, you know, it, you know you're not, uh, I think I said it to uh, the Lauterbach team, you're not, going to give me somebody that says, you know, they did a really bad job. Mm -hmm. um, although, in the case of Sikic, there were two of the four references that said, yeah, there was some timeliness of delivery issues, and, uh, and I didn't measure that anywhere, I tried to put that on a grid or, or anything like that, but it's one of those qualitative differentiators to keep in mind. What were yeah. they... Um what were they alluding to that wasn't timely? What they, had a, they had a delivery and they missed it. You know, and final delivery order. of 
final audit report, final report, report or maintenance that what it is? or yeah. I mean that's the only Which deliverable. Which they specify? What did they specify? I'd have, have, have to go back to my notes. Well, what they said was, you know, they missed it and they were able to recover and and get it there at some later time. But you know what you what you depend on is people doing what they tell you they're going to do. So mm -hmm. if it's going to come on the 12th, you expect it to be there on the 12th, not the 13th. Mm -hmm. So it was that type of thing. And that was the pitch? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, what's, what's not in here, um, because, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the way this is all coming out, and it's louder, back, louder, back, louder, back, louder, back, okay? And so I, I said, so what if I took the rankings and I reversed them? What if I made 112, 12, 1, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? You might get too much time. It's completely reversed. Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's a spreadsheet. Sure. You know. So, um, you know, so I pointed to the reverse rankings and lot of back came out of time. And then I said, okay, what if I just did 1 to 12? A lot of back came out of time. What if I do 12 to 1? You know, in, in, in order, a lot of back came out of time. So, you know, I tried to look at this a number of different ways. Um, I mean, you know, if you look, if you go back to page three, I mean, just by sight, you can see the strength of their uh, proposal uh, compared to everybody else. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, in retrospect, I could have stopped on page three. Mm -hmm. Basically. Sure. Oh, did you did a very detailed uh, look at things, and uh, as I recall from a lot of the things that we did when we set up uh, bids for proposals, they had vendors come in. We did a lot of the same things. So we, we, we talked amongst the group that was going to uh, set up the requirements. Again, that's what you had there. You had a rating scale. And it takes out that emotion. So somebody comes in and gives a, a big dead on presentation, and this is like others can be swayed by that presentation when, when the core. Uh, responses don't necessarily support. Well, I mean, true. Um, at the end of the day, um, page three is my subjective evaluation of whether the mm -hmm. sure. made a quality uh, answer or not. I mean, sometimes it's black and white. If it's not there, it's not there. Uh, if it is there, to what degree? You know, so you're talking about different grades mm -hmm. of, you know, red or black. So. I think it's interesting, the third question, they're the only ones who's neutral. Everybody else is red. Yeah, I, I, I don't know the third question. Independent. Independent. Oh, uh, yeah, well, they, you know, they didn't talk about, you know, again, you know, um, they didn't talk about it as much. Um, the other firms, you know, talked about, you know, maybe in the extreme, talked about doing uh, an internal search. And, you know, the, the legal firms do this a lot. So if you go to a legal firm uh, to hire them, they're going, and, and you know this probably mm -hmm. well, much more than I do, you're going to, you're going to do a, a, an internal search for conflicts. Yeah. You know, so if Tim, you and I are suing each other, and I'm already there, yeah. it's very unlikely that they'll take you as a client unless they can figure out some, you know, some way to segregate everything. But, yeah, I mean, that's, you have to have a really big firm and all that. Um, accounting firms do similar types of things, you know, so, you know, if um, my brother worked at one of the firms or something like that, then, you know, they would say, yeah, I really can't do this, you know, so. Okay. All right. Greg, thanks very much. It looks like a lot of work went into this, and uh, it was uh, uh, interesting reading this. So thank you for oh, doing that, and you. also calling for the references, too. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. so, we appreciate you know that. what's uh, not included in this report is today's presentation. No. Well, of I, course I, purpose, of course. I purposefully excluded um, a motion, um, mm -hmm. you know, because what I did not want to do is say, we recommend this firm, and, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't want these, either, either firm to, uh, uh, to feel like they were being used in some fashion or we were wasting their time. Um, I wanted the board to have the experience of interviewing them, and I wanted the board to consider um, the quality of the, of the proposals and, uh, and craft the motion, uh, you know, here on, uh, around, the, around the table. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, I was a little surprised that they fell down, Sickets fell down in the, the area of uh, timeliness, and maybe that was their way of trying to get back on, back on track because they do have that portal now. So, so they have a portal where, uh, and we use that a lot in delivery of our projects where you can actually see progress of what's going on, not just one individual or two individuals, but the, the entire team sees the understanding of what are the deliverables and what are those deliverables mm -hmm. do. So that may be that they're trying to get back on track and they were missing an arc before. All right. So um, once again, I'll just go around the table and um, let each person uh, express their opinion as to uh, what firm they'd like us to use, if there's anything they want to point out to the rest of the group that they observed when reading the report or listening or you know, whatever you want to say about it. Um, we'll just go around the room and give you a chance, each of you a just chance to speak. Like one minute just to yeah. look over for Oh, just sure. another minute. Okay, do we want to uh, take a bathroom break if anybody wants to do that or look at the folders? Okay, or just stay where you are. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you say you said that the water bag provides? Free education mm -hmm. for because yeah. I, I couldn't see it. Yeah, it's, it's right. Where's my this is your proposal. Yeah. Right. Which one is oh yes, that's that one. Okay. Or maybe it wasn't in this thing. Maybe it was. It in wasn't in this one. Yeah, yeah. No, it's the. They have a copy of their proposal yeah. in there. It was in and the bound, yeah. the bound thing that you have your hand on? Yeah, the bound one. It's, uh, it's in there. Okay. Right. I'm sorry, you should have said the page number. I believe you. I just wanted to remember it. Uh, right here, page four. Okay. Client educational opportunities. Uh, oh, all right. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody can just steer me to the sickage what companies that they work for right now. You know how um, he said the water bottle um Amon, they have their whole list of all the libraries yeah, it's, 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 I, I just wanted to look at that really quick before I like where their focus is. Okay. And, uh, on the original proposal, they have listed Hinsdale Public Library, Masses of Public Library, Sticking Forest District, West Chicago District, Warrenville, Wooddale, and St. Charles. Okay. Oh, this one. Okay. It's in here. Ah, okay. So there's no page number, so it's hard to find. They have, um, uh, they have a number of uh, governmental clients. Uh, not as many libraries as uh, Waterbach. Um, most of the libraries that they gave us as references um, were outside of Cook County. That's what I noticed. Yeah. From Sickett? Yeah. There, yeah. Uh, there was one in Cook County that was way far south, and most of their um, reference uh, libraries were uh, really not comparable to us. You know, maybe a million six in budget or something. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Um, uh, there was one that I, I think St. Charles Library, uh, St. Charles Public Library, I think was pretty close to us. Um, but they're, you know, they came from it. You know, and, and with the nuances between the county taxes and so forth, it's, you know, probably. Here it is for Okay. Yeah, let me tell you, I'll tell you the same which one. Oh, it was the Stickney Forest View Library in Stickney, Illinois. That was their oh, one, uh, one Cook County Library. Um, everything else is DuPage, 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 DuPage. Don't forget their South, too. I think Science Road, for example. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay, so I think that answered that. Uh, yeah, so you. I'm gonna. Can we go around the room now? Or, mm -hmm. or, um, okay, Tim. Uh, um, uh, <coughs> Lauterbach is my choice. I just based on cost and the other factors that Greg uh, motioned, uh, mentioned, or noticed. 
Uh, plus, I really am impressed with the number of libraries that they serve. Yeah. That's a Okay. Yeah, I agree with uh, the, the detail that uh, Greg pulled together. Uh, I, you know, I'm listening to the two presentations. Uh, I like Sickers' uh, little short and sweet presentation. Talk about transition or portal. They had a good uh, sales approach uh, as opposed to Waterdeck, but uh, based off of the requirements of what you know, the, the library was looking for. Uh, I think everything ranked and stacked uh, in uh, Waterdeck's uh, favor. So nice job, Greg. Uh, yeah. on. Um, I could concur with Dennis. I mean, I felt the same way. I didn't need my emotions because honestly, they had a great presentation. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, they really did. Um, I really liked some of the buzzwords that they used. I transition their, part. Their transition, um, not only that, I really liked that they have the webinar. Like, they seem more technology based. Um, mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that that a lot of it doesn't. It's just right. that they are right. they were hitting these points right. that were like, oh, I like that, you know. However, experience is what I'm looking for. And experience is Lauderbeck slammed down for me. Um, that, that's why I wanted the extra minute, because I just really needed to make sure that I was comparing apples to apples. And I feel like for our library, we really need someone to come in here and really know what other libraries are doing and can give us their expertise, see what we have, compare, contrast, and give us added value. And I think it, and for the purpose, is a lot of Um Well, I was impressed with Sikic's presentation only because I was extremely disappointed in Lauterbach. I was shocked that two people had not much to present. And with their experience, with all the libraries, I was surprised in three minutes, they didn't really have much to say. So they kind of, I, I was kind of caught off by that. Actually, I was alarmed. I mean, usually coming to um, give a presentation is when you give it your all, and they didn't have much to say. Um, I did, um, in Sikich's presentation, where they did mention their portal, and she detailed everything she does in the, in the process. I felt like there were a lot of checks and balances to help us through this process, and maybe like Dennis said, that could be as a result of what Greg found out. Um, I'm looking at these numbers, uh, Greg assigned them, and Lauterbach's 342, Sickage is 310. I mean, they sound close, but according to what Greg is saying about experience and um, the fact that Sickage didn't meet their deadlines, that's more frightening as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess from experience, Lauterbach is the better of the two. Okay, thank you. Good. The main thing is, yeah, I remember even from us discussing it last time that Lauterbach had more libraries experience. And this timeliness thing, yeah, that really kind of <laughs> makes me think, warning, Will Robinson. <laughs> Sorry, I'm dating myself. <laughs> I remember okay. the phrase, quite well. <laughs> All right, so, Diane? Um, honestly, I agree with all that's been said. Um, there's nothing else to say. Sikic, I really enjoyed their presentation. I thought they were very thorough. But, you know, my first impression, even before they came in with Lauterbach, and the price is right, and they will do the job as well, I'm very sure. Okay, all right. Um, did you have any other? No. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I, when we first got the bids in, of course, Lauterbach had the lowest bid, and so, you know, based on that reason alone, I was sort of inclined to go with them, but I was afraid that maybe they weren't quite up to snuff. But based on the references and this matrix that we've seen, and I, I, I thought their presentation was okay. I thought it was fine. Um, I can't see any reason not to go with them. So um, I am inclined to vote for Lauterbach also. So I think what I'm going to ask for, unless anyone else. Can I just ask one last question? 
Greg, you know, in terms of these 12 items that, that you use to um, um, critique these um, audit, audit firms, um, I know somewhere in here you said, well, maybe all 12 of these items aren't, aren't as key as they need to be. You know, like we, we talked about, uh, um, I don't know, maybe continuity. I mean, there's their fees. I mean, their fee is what it is. I guess from your perspective as a business manager, you did feel, I mean, when it comes to the crux of being an auditor, you felt much stronger with ladder back, mm -hmm. even though, yeah. you know, because sometimes... Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask, based on what I've heard so far, I'm going to ask for a motion to uh, approve ladder back as our new auditors uh, beginning with this year. Uh, do I have such a motion? Uh, I think Tim may have, but Patty, would you like to second? Fine. My hand's there. Uh, yes. You don't have to be a one-year contract or a three-year uh, contract based on the yes, pricing. We did discuss that part. Yes. Okay. That's a, that's a good question. What, right, what's the advantage of one over the other? Well, um, yeah, first, of th first of all, any kind of change auditing firms, it's, you know, it is a bit of a tumult. You know, there's a lot of extra work. Um, generally, firms uh, want a longer uh, relationship because once they get it down after the first year, then, you know, each year, each successive year becomes uh, easier. So I've asked them off for three-year bids. Uh, some gave three, some gave five. Uh, in addition to the three, and uh, some also did a single year price. I can't remember. Do you have the lot of money? No, no. no. The, the proposal. No. no, the actual proposal. I think you did it. From last year, this week. I got it. I got it. Um, so, what they did. Um, so actually with, uh, with Lauterbach, um, their one-year option is the same as the first year and the three-year option. It's $9,000 either way. Right. Yeah. Now, I will tell you that every year you're going to have an engagement letter and you're going to you know, vote on this again. Um, so I think you would be just fine saying that you approve them for the June 30th, 2019 cycle. Um, and then, at, you know, depending on, on how things work out, uh, I think it's November mm -hmm. uh, of this year when they typically finalize and, and they give us the report, um, you can start thinking about whether or not you'd like to invite them back. Yeah. Um, Do you think we, uh, the, what we have here is a request for proposal that gives us three year um, mm -hmm. proposals? Mm -hmm. so, and so we could take one year or three years after so example. Do you think we would risk losing the prices that are here if we did not? Oh, possibly, yeah. Um, I mean, that's one concern I have. I suppose a lot of us could dramatically raise its price yeah, in if we didn't year. take this off. Right. Um, but, but, you know, I mean, at the end, at, at the end of the day, it's it's always your your decision whether or not to re-engage in the company for, in, uh, in the follow-on cycles. And is three years of a contract really that, you know, rather than going, I, I don't know, to me three years of them coming back or hiring them isn't, I don't know, I, I, it's not that long a time, really. Yeah, well most, um, a lot of uh, governments, a lot of companies have a, have a policy which uh, forces them to, you know, look for new auditors every three to five years. You know, uh, they don't want things to get stale. Mm -hmm. They want fresh eyes, a new approach, and which makes sense. You know, they don't want anybody to be complacent. Um, now, you know, having said that, um, might I suggest that I don't know that this board has the appropriate frame of reference because we've had the same auditors. Yes, sure. That's, that's another thing. <laughs> So, you know, I, 
I think you know three years would be incredibly <laughs> short in comparison. Yeah, to what we had. <laughs> yeah, I think true. So, um, and, 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 and as I said, you know, it's up to you every year whether or not to uh, whether or not to re-engage them. But I think it'd be wise to approve them for the three years and okay. uh, and continue to exercise your option each year. Um, well, let me ask you this: Do we really have an option? I mean, if we if we uh, vote to approve them for a three-year period of time, we're essentially entering into a contract for three years, and we're agreeing to pay them this amount every really. every one every one of those years. Or do we have a clause that says that by a certain time we can, we always, can... We can always fire them, or they can fire us? Well, okay, but mm -hmm. are we going to be sustaining some damages as a result no. of that? No, it happens all the time. Oh, good. Because right, I, I just want to make sure that if we decide that well, all you're we... Signing, all you're doing is signing an engagement letter for the upcoming audit cycle. Okay. And there's nothing beyond that. There's no yeah. promises. There's no. It's standard. It's basically standard. All right. But no promises on their part either in terms of the fees that they're charging next year or the year after that either. Is that correct? Um, no, except that, you know, they, um, they have some uh, pretty interesting uh, comments out there in the... Uh, in the Ethernet and uh, you know how they don't live up to their word. Um, okay. and they gave us a proposal and then they you know doubled our price in the, in the following year. I mean they, they don't want that out there in any regard. Okay, I mean it's a proposal that they're not locked into though, right? Uh, yeah, except you know by honor. And they did have something in there saying that they haven't or no that they in the last three years they haven't had any state or Sorry? I think it's different. I think it's different. Something about the last three years, but I think it might not be about proposals. Um, federal or state desk reviews of its audits during the last three years. So no, it's different. So, not that they haven't stood behind their board. But okay. Yeah, I mean, this they does have it as, you know, a one-year option, a three-year option, a five-year option. I mean, yeah. it's mm -hmm. something of a contract, I would think. Well, I'm sure you're right, but we don't that. I mean, based on even that, based on knowing that in the last three years, no disciplinary has been taken against the firm, state or professionally, I think we're pretty safe at this month. Yeah. Locally, government, I think we'll do 99% government. And seriously. Yeah, I think, we're, I think we're safe. We don't want to get press out there. So I think they're going to try and keep to what they're telling us. Yeah. Well, all right. Um, do I have any uh, comments, any further comments as to whether or not we want to go with the, the one-year proposal or the three-year proposal? Or, or three. three. I would say three. Okay. All right. So three-year proposal. But Greg, do you think that even if we do tell them we want to accept their three-year proposal, that we can still decline to use them the second or third year for, for some reason or other we hate them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Excuse me, I don't want to I think hate is a, is, is a legal concept that, uh, okay. that you can bring to bear here. Um, you know, I, I just want to make sure that uh, that's a possibility. I, I haven't sure. actually. Sure. Sure. All right. Okay, fine. Uh, all right, so having uh, heard that, uh, I'm going to ask for a motion to approve Lauderback for and accept their uh, proposal for a three year period of time to serve as our auditors. Motion. Okay, please make a motion. Second. Can we do a roll call, please? Uh, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I think that I'm glad to have made that decision. Thank so, you again, Greg. Yes. yes. Thank, thank you for all that work. Thank you. So um, I, I just note that it's, it's almost 9 o'clock, and we have quite a bit left on our agenda here. So. Uh, I'm just going to invite the members to think if there's any item that you would like to table to our next meeting, although there may be some reasons why some of these matters we should do sooner rather than later. So before I ask for that motion, I'm just going to ask 
uh, Susan, are there some of these things that we really should address tonight, like say painting the portico or, or something like that? Is there some painting the portico definitely needs to be on there, and uh, I think Greg does need to let you know what the upcoming things are, and you know everything else potentially could roll to the next meeting, although that's you know a really big agenda the next yeah. month. But um, yeah, yeah but, we, but we won't have those presentations, and no. it's not so much this All right. Okay. okay, or are some of these uh, fairly quick, like the proposed strategic work plan? This, the strategic work plan would be 10 minutes, I think. I mean, I don't know if you guys had a chance to review it. I, I, did. Did. I, did. I did. So, And okay. even if we do half now, if we don't get yeah, it, start rolling. Cause it's, okay. Well, can I just ask that maybe what we can postpone is public participation and comments? Because I'm thinking strategic planning is going to take a bit. You, know you mean you postpone the, you're, you're suggesting we postpone the uh, review of the administrative policy? Is that yes. correct? Yes. Right. If you want to make a motion to table that to the next meeting, you could do that. Because I'm thinking, I, I thought um, the strategic planning would take a while. Um, well, we just heard from Susan. You want to make that motion? Yeah, let's make we'll a motion. All start. right, I motion that we table we public motion. Oh, she's right. Uh, we don't even, you don't even Wait, have to table it. You don't even have to table it because the only reason you table it is if someone else has made a motion to put it on the table. But it's not yet even on the table. So, so, it, it, so it, if, if nobody even makes a motion tonight, it just automatically gets passed. Okay. But so, it'll go on next. Yes. It, yes okay. It'll be on next, it'll okay. be on next month's agenda. All right. So, I don't know if that makes sense. But, yes. Okay. So. Next item, motion to approve the proposed strategic work plan. Susan, would you like to begin with that? A motion? Uh, all right, fine. Um, that it, you know, I, I, I guess I just have a question. Do we vote for, do we always make a motion to approve this? I thought you just reported on this, but make no. Uh, well, I mean, I have been, but this is the new version of it, and the board, you know, we, we want to know that we have the board's instructions okay. to be doing these things. All right, yeah. okay. So, yeah. Do I have a motion to approve the proposed strategic work plan for 2019-2020? Patty makes a motion. Second. And from the second, sir. All right, so, Susan, would you like to address this? Yeah, this let me just uh, review what this is, which is that you'll recall that two years ago you created a strategic plan. The top part of each, the focuses were part of the strategic plan. Outcome was part of the strategic plan, and the investments were part of the strategic plan. So this takes the, the plan itself that you approve and tries to flesh it out to execute the plan that you approve. So, um, so you wouldn't be suggesting changes to any of the investments. You just would be if you didn't think that the projects were the right way to carry them out. So one new thing on here is that um, we are aware that our lobby. Uh, People come in and they don't know exactly who to ask for where to go for things. And we feel like people you know, have to wait at the desk. And so we want to experiment with having a kind of kiosk off of the first poll with a greeter there who would have directional information and can kind of send people going in the right direction in a more quick way. So that's something to experiment with. We'd do something temporary at first to see if it works and if we can staff it. And then we would move from there. We also uh, have that commons desk in the commons, which uh, currently is used somewhat with passports, but um, we have some ideas for how we might use that in the future, so we're going to experiment with that. Uh, at the bottom, enhance onboarding experience. We have a number of things proposed here that we want to make, um, help people understand when they come and get a library card, all of that that entitles them to, and what they could be using their library card for, and just be more inclusive. Enhance onboarding experience for new oh, library okay. users. Yeah. All of those things are new. Um, and they're all just to make people feel welcome as they've come in and gone to the bother of getting their library card and uh, just give them a, you know, more information about what the library card is for them because we're not doing a fantastic job of that right now. The next page, we want to implement a new staff intranet. Uh, we had one idea for that that did not work out, so we're continuing to work on that. But that's so that staff, when they want have a question that they want to have answered, they don't have to go rooting through their emails and you know trying to find a lot of those emails. Excuse me, thank you. Going on to the next page, strategic plan focus two, expanded community engagement. 
Um, we're beginning to form the community task force. I have uh, the principal of Gemini School has actually already volunteered on his own to be on that without even knowing that we were developing it. So I think he will be a great start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which which item are you on on fifty six? Uh, first one. Oh, thank you, internal task force. Thank you. Yeah, and so moving down a few, it's begin determining the makeup and responsibilities of the community and staff task force. So that I will be getting that, um, and then uh, the, the one thing I do want to bring to your attention, I don't want anybody to say I slipped it in or anything. I think you have to consider what options there are for serving the unserved people who are not paying taxes to any library, cannot be adopted into Glenview or Des Plaines or Morton Grove because those are municipal libraries. They can only become a part of our library. So I think that you should consider if you're going to try to find a way to bring them into the library. I used to district. ride my bicycle two and a half miles to the library. But they're not, they don't have library cards at all. They don't pay taxes to a library. Where, where is the, where are these areas actually? Um, they mostly are unincorporated Glenview um, up by Washington School is a big pocket of them. And we, that's why we keep, you know, the, mm -hmm. the school board president at District 63 came and spoke to the board once about it. It is an ongoing issue that they have all these kids in the school mm -hmm. that can't use the libraries. Are so, these particular people, some of the people, I'm speaking from experience here, who have to pay a fee. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can. Um, my question then is, is their fee, since they can only come to our library, less than other people who want these? No, the point of it is that whatever fee they pay is what they would be paying in taxes anyway. Oh, okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. Because I know, you know, we have they, kids that live in, in uh, Rosemont, but they have to pay this lanes like two or three hundred dollars yeah. for a yeah. library card. Right. That would be the same thing with yeah. these people? That's exactly okay. right. Okay. So I'm not saying that we should do it, I'm saying we should look at it. It's considering the options. Uh, the next one is evaluating our service model, and there are several things here that we want to start measuring with staffing. Um, these are all things that for the supervisors to be looking at. In particular, this is not information that would be coming directly to the board, but it will be for the supervisors to work together on analyzing how the staff is deployed and what, what they are doing with their time. Uh, moving on to strategic focus three, focus staff development at the bottom. Consider best ways to provide library services and collections to non-English speakers. We didn't tackle this at all in the last plan, but this is something where, um, you know, obviously this is an extremely diverse uh, community that we serve and we many times do have recent immigrants who come to the desk and have a hard time communicating so we have a number of things here to try to work on that um, including software um, finding our translators within the building uh, finding out exactly which languages we need to be working in and things like that the next, the next page, strategic plan focus four, enhanced community awareness and alignment. This is the part that we worked the most on last time, so it's, a lot of this part got done. Um, I again, I am going to bring back to you the possibility of adding a little bit more exterior exterior signage, which you can either vote for or you can thumbs down, but I'm going to bring it back. I'm just telling well, you. you know, we, we talked about there. that last time and we said that's what we wanted to do at that time, but we told you, you know, if you want to come back for Jen, that's something we could do and we'll yeah. think about it then. Yeah, exactly. So I will be. Okay, I've lost my place. Where are we? Uh, on strategic plan, I'm not working on the one from the thing. So I think you're at 59. 59. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, and then on the, at the bottom, define best practices for each segment. Um, data analysis is becoming a thing for which many libraries are actually hiring a person where that's their job. I am not advocating for that, but I think we might want to hire summer interns or something like that to be looking at our data a little bit. Because, you know, we sort of approach things with this mindset where we think we already know, and I would really like somebody that did not have that mindset to be looking at. So when you're saying... Intern, are you suggesting a high school intern? Probably more a college student, okay. I would think. Okay. Yeah. And then on to the next page at the bottom, uh, and I recall at the time that we said, in a way, this is what this plan is all about. Identify barriers to customer service and communication. So these are all the things that get in people's way of using the library. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it can be that somebody had got yelled at in their childhood at the library, <laughs> yes. and I ever want to come yeah. back again. And, 
Yeah, there are a lot of things like that. So these are all things to look at as possible barriers and to try to address some of them, which, you know, you know any public building is going to have barriers for people who are disabled. And so, you know, you have to try to find out, you know, where are people getting, having problems and what sorts of issues do you have. So these are some things that we want to do for that. That's a very quick overview of the newest parts of this plan. Some of the things obviously carry over from the last plan. And as, as I said, it's an ambitious plan. It will, it will take a lot of work. Is it a costly um, You know, anything that is costly in it will be coming to the board for their approval. Okay. And will be in the budget. Okay. So you'll be able to start it. Okay. Yeah, I started trying to assign dollars, but I found that my dollars from the last one were so off base anyway that they were such wild estimates. Because you don't really I, know where you start. I just didn't want any assumption that, oh, yeah, we're giving approval to this yeah, work no, no. plan, so we're going to get this money. No, no. Okay. No, not at all. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that. My, I have the, a question back to the library card. What's the likelihood if somebody has to pay two to three hundred dollars for one card for it's a family? For a person. No. It's for a family. family. It's for a family. That's better than I thought. If it's for a family, they might think, okay. Because I know we've done it for a student. Mm -hmm. So it's for a family, it's a little better situation. Because I was, you know, a family. That's a cool add up. Okay. Can, that's I, not too bad. can I just ask a couple questions? Done. Yeah, fine. Go for it. Okay. Um, on page 54 of the bottom, prepare a document with full list of what you can do with the library card. Mm -hmm. Is it something like I see we're advertising best deal around for yeah. our... Yeah. Okay. It's kind of okay. hand-in-hand with the best deal ever. Yeah. Okay. And then I had another question on 56. What is in the middle, keep mapping in Ref USA and public record? Uh, those are particular software that we, that we have that we have access to so heat mapping would be see where it's seeing where you have concentrations of different types of people oh okay yeah. all right Sounds good. some things that work with map programs oh okay um that's that's all i had is there going to be any uh, assumption or anticipation that if you hire a college intern for that data analysis that this project they'll have a deliverable at the end of this internship sure you get volunteers as interns too? Or, you know. uh, we don't tend to do that. We tend to hire. Yes. No, can I just make a comment about that? Um, I work with um, a lot of databases, and my job is cleaning up all the mistakes. And what I've learned or what I've observed is uh, we hire this one, then we hire that one, and you end up with a mess. Sure. So you're going to need some, I mean, you're going to need the data, so you're going to need some continuity or something to help you get through it, because it, it's amazing yeah. how much has to be corrected. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that. Yeah. Sure. And bear that in mind. I'd be very interested in seeing the results of some of this, you know, this heat project mm -hmm. if you do it, or whatever, you know, the other yeah. types of uh, analysis you uh, hope to do. Yeah, some of these have built-in board presentations that they'll be coming back to you with. Okay. Right. I have a question. On the uh, first page, you were talking about testing the patron services. Yeah. Yes. Um, would you have something for the staff member to do in between answering questions? I mean, they, I could just see them sitting there for you know, an hour or two without anybody. Well, I mean, that, that is the dilemma, because yeah. as soon as somebody is like working on a cart or something like that, then the perception of people is, yeah. oh, I'm interrupting this person, and they walk right by. So, it, like I said, it'll be an experiment. It might very well be something that's not staffed all the time. It might be something that's staffed during more peak times. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the people at the other desks, you know, we, we started originally with like having a greeter and they just, you know, it, the problem is that other staff members would start, come up and start chatting with them. Patrons would just come up and start having a long conversation with them. And then, you know, again, you're not getting the interaction with the people who need it. So I think it will definitely have to be intentionally done. Um, but the, yeah, the, the person whose idea with it, this is, is actually Sasha's brother, Surgeon, who's the assistant supervisor of the patron services department. He's a very sharp young man. I think he will have some good ideas in developing this. What you need is an interactive screen. Yeah. Hologram. There you go. Yes, a hologram would be fantastic to bend me. 
Wouldn't that be something? Too many pixels. All right. <laughs> yeah, right. Can I just make, uh, can I just yep. kind of uh -huh. piggyback on that? Um, I, I know that you're working on labeling each room so that the patrons know what's where, and then you were thinking of, if, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought you were going to have some torque sort of documentation that kind of tells them what's where that they could use, or is that going to be just for the department so they can... Well, the who answers advise. what where is, is main, aimed at staff, so okay, that they so know what's not, there, but right. I think that's very likely something that would get put together for this first floor kiosk, so that you'd have a thing to say, oh, you're looking for this, this is where it is in the building. Okay. And, and kind of like a map? Yeah, something like that. But our building is very hard to map, mm -hmm. you know. It's not exactly a four-floor building. It's really like a two-floor with two mezzanine building. Really hard to get on a map properly. So, you know, it will take some development. But we'll okay. Come up with something. All right, so we have a motion on the floor to approve the proposed strategic work plan for 2019-2020. Uh, unless there's any other questions? I do. I swear that I'm done. Okay. okay, so this is a work plan for 2019 So, what? So all of this will be completed by a certain day in 2020? Oh, no. Hopefully, but realistically, the last work plan rolled over into the next one, and I, you know, I don't think any, some of these things are just things that are never going to absolutely get done. I think by the end of, or in 2020, we'll start looking at the next strategic plan, because what will happen, and some of this will probably end up rolling. But that is the goal. I mean, we do want to get through it all. It's just some of these I look at, and it's like, wow, we have a lot going on in spring 2019. Okay. All right. Then, uh, I was for roll call now. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay, the next two items on the agenda uh, appear somewhat related. Motion to approve proposed salary schedule and motion to approve proposed salary increase. Is this is this something that could be put over to the next meeting? Yeah, I, I, it would give us more time to prepare and anything. So. Okay. All right. All right. Well, if somebody really wants to talk about it tonight, they can make a motion. But if not, we will just go on to the next item. Which looks like a fairly simple one. Oh, Dave is left. Darn. I was going to ask him about painting the portico, but um, I don't know that we really need to ask many questions. So uh, let's let's talk about painting the portico. I think that's pretty quick. I mean, it, it looks pretty bad. Yeah, I, yeah I've read the uh, the things, and I agree with the one that was suggested because of the fact there's a longer period that they'll come back and fix what needs to be fixed. I forget which what page that was on. What page was yeah, it on? All right, we are on the page 62. So what I'm doing is asking for uh, a motion to award the uh, Paint Platoon USA a contract uh, in the amount of $7,980 uh, to paint the front portico entry of the library. Plain Platoon was the lowest bidder, and uh, well, actually, Cerner no, they Pro, weren't. Actually, no. Cerner Pro oh, I'm was, sorry. Oh, they were. Oh no, I read it wrong. Yes, yeah, you're right. Pro was a little bit lower, but uh, they only had a two-year warranty, and Plain Platoon uh, has a five had a five-year warranty. I, I see sure. that now. I see that. So Thank to me, the practice. amount of difference is worth the three extra years of warranty. Yeah, I think so. Provided they stay in business. Uh, well, let's pray. Sure. <laughs> no, I just, I, I have no, I don't know, I don't know history on paint, yeah. but anybody with the name paint platoon uh, sounds. They sound serious to me. Yeah, you know, it doesn't sound like serious. <laughs> yeah, which is going After many, many years, not five. So, but, so uh, anyway, we still don't have a motion cool. on the floor. <laughs> I motion, whatever, just so we can get this going. Thank you, June. Uh, award the contract. Second. It's the motion. Do you have a second? Yes, right here. Diane. Yeah. Diane is the second. All right. Uh, do we have any uh, discussion about uh, whether we need to plan it and um, if this is the contract or award? I think we definitely need to paint it. If you look at it, it looks really That's bad. It's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. we got to paint that. Um, it's my opinion. And uh, as far as the uh, painter, it, you know, it seems reasonable to go with paint platoon since we'll get a little more of a warranty. Anybody else have any uh, comments uh, about this matter? Um, I have a question. Yes. In terms of a five-year warranty, 
but I mean it's outside, so the weather can damage it, but it doesn't matter. It's under warranty. Mm -hmm. So there's no restrictions. That's supposed to ship crack, fade, or peel. So to me, that sounds yeah. pretty darn good. Yeah. Okay. And it's all written. Yeah. No, I was just I was wondering. Yeah. Really, wow, an outside um, yeah. of space. They it's have kind of hard to believe it's for that long for an outside area. Okay. Okay. Um, may I have a roll call? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Kenny? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Chen? Yes. Right, the next item on the agenda is a notification. Uh, Greg, is this something that you would like to go through fairly quickly, or do you want to take more time to do this next time? Well, I, you know, I, I really am seeking permission to uh, post this uh, in the paper and, and solicit bids. Um, there should be a copy of the uh, yeah. bid notification. Yeah. Um, so, um, one of the things that was on the uh, maintenance work plan uh, this year was, uh, or is, the uh, resealing and striping of our parking lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think the last time we did it was maybe four or five years ago. Uh, so we were, we were uh, inviting folks to come out and take a look. And pretty consistently, uh, we had identified some areas in the parking lot which uh, basically need to be cut out. And uh, the substrate has to be uh, refreshed. What is substrate? Um, you know, the rocks and sand and stuff like that yeah, that are under the asphalt. Okay. Um, and the uh, uh, and then four inches of uh, asphalt has to be added to the top. Okay, before they can seal the stripe and all of that kind of stuff. A lot of the bids uh, were kind of getting close or just over the $25,000 state bid limit in the uh, you know, state procurement uh, uh, laws. So uh, we thought it best uh, to actually put this out in, uh, to bid. And uh, you know the plan is to get bids by no later than uh, March 25th. And then to uh, bring them to the board for approval after we've done some due diligence on them. That takes place at the April meeting. Um, the importance of the timing is that um, we won't be able to do it this spring because of the, the amount of work that has to be done. So we're actually bidding this for September over Labor Day. Mm -hmm. um, the reason we can't do it in the spring is because it may run into and disrupt the biggest program that we have every year, which is the summer reading book. Okay. okay. I mean, we try to we try to do that like over Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. um, but I I don't think at this point we'll be able to. Uh, to pull that off. So, so what we're doing... Do we have some bad panels out there? I haven't really looked at them. Really no, there. what's happening is um, it's collapsing like around the drains. Okay. You know, so, you know, you have, so you have a lot of waviness, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of elevation change. And uh, so all of that needs to be built out. The, um, I don't know the exact terms. Uh, Dave is much better at it. But basically the drain has to be rebuilt, you know, and then it has to be filled in around there so that it's level. And uh, you know, and it it's has safer. to be raised because of the fact with it sunken, you get water collecting and yeah, but it's you know, but it's and stuff too. Yeah, but it's around the drain, mm -hmm. you know, and and um, but nevertheless, you know, with those elevation changes, it you know becomes a, a tripping hazard. It becomes mm -hmm. you know somebody doesn't expect it. You know, as they're driving, you know, they could uh, lose momentary control of their car. Um, and you know we'd like to have a nice flat uh, area. Um, mm -hmm. Also includes uh, uh, some of the areas um, around the entry uh, off of uh, Open. You know it takes a beating from the buses and, and heavy, uh, you know heavier uh, vehicles that come through here, mostly the buses. Yeah. So when we set it up to bids, do you specify like what areas of the parking lot? We want redone. So yeah, we are have, getting bids that are consistent. With yeah, the we have work. Uh, we have a map. I mean, the map's not here. Okay. Uh, the map is, uh, you know, something that you know. We'll Part of the out. bid packet. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get more contract, the bid packet, and 
you know, we'll ask for things like, uh, you know, indemnity, so that should anything happen, regardless of their insurance, it's not on us, you know, we're completely protected. Mm -hmm. Of course, we want it backed up by an insurance uh, yes. uh, mm -hmm. policy uh, so that they have the ability to pay, but we don't want to pay nickel one on it. We'll also have things like the um, assurance that everybody that's working isn't working for uh, less than a living wage. If you remember, every June we agree that, that, yeah, that we're going to uh, uh, follow the living wage uh, uh, rules in the state. Um, you know, so there's you know a lot of things like that that you know we ask for separate sign-offs on, as well as I think our contract is maybe eight or ten pages or something like that. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? Okay, fine. Uh, thank you for notifying us about that, and you're going to be letting those bids, uh, sending those bids out. Is that right, or is there any hurry because it's not till September? Well, we'll um, mm -hmm. want to get them on. Okay. Because we're very specific on the date. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So um, what we'll do next mm -hmm. is Diane will post this in um, in the newspaper, um, and uh, you know the, uh, the what do we use, Diane? The, the, the Feral Spectator, I think, is what we use, which is part of the Tribune, and then it has very wide circulation. And and these agencies actually are have people that are reading the newspaper yes. for this type That's of right. stuff, and then they and then they distribute it um, you know, to specific areas. And then, of course, you know, we'll send it to the uh, guys that we've used in the past. I think the last time was a place called Jacob Jacob's Brothers or something like that. And okay. So we'll give one to them. And, you know, the other guys that have given us some of the preliminary information. So. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, so the next item on our agenda on the unfinished business is review of administrative policy. And I think there was sort of a feeling that unless somebody makes a motion, we will just skip that for now and save that for the next meeting. Uh, item number 12 is executive session. Is that something we need to have uh, this evening? It's uh, not too pressing, but we are going to be in more need to do it after the next meeting. So it, it, I think it's five minutes. I okay. don't think it's a long one. I mean, think it'll be kind of a thumbs yeah. up or a thumbs down from yeah. you guys. So. Okay. okay. All right. Fine. Then we're going to need to uh, have a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel. Is there such a motion? Okay. Motion. Second. Second. Okay. okay. We uh, do you need a roll call for that? Yes. Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Diane. Yes. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Tim. Yes. Okay. Right. So we will do that now, and then we'll wait for our meeting, hopefully for a short time. <laughs> know if I can have a motion to uh, pay Dave Dombrowski a bonus of $1,000 in recognition of the additional work he has put in during the past month combating the snow and winter conditions that we've experienced here in Niles, and to also uh, pay a bonus of $1,000 to Bernadetta K. I'm just going to say her last name K, uh, but I think you know who I'm talking about, in recognition of the work that she did uh, in connection with the coming together in Niles Township celebrates Poland uh, program that is taking place, programs that are taking place throughout the month and for which she spent an enormous amount of time working on. Do I have such a motion? Motion. Second. Mm -hmm. um, we have a roll call. Karen? Yes. 
Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. That's very nice of all of you. All right. I'm not going to entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. No, no, no. What about the other person? No, she yeah. did. Oh, oh, did. Oh, oh, I missed another name. I'm sorry. Yeah, I okay, I apologize. No, I need it. so hard. <laughs> yeah, real quick, I just want to say in other that I met a team from my school downstairs. They were competing, and they won, and they were so excited. And they, they said, your board member, can you tell them thank you? No. Aww. And that they're going to recommend other coaches so that it fills into a bigger thing. They said it was great. They really appreciated it. And they're excited about their price. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's good to hear. All right. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting now? Yes. Okay. Second. Second. Um, all right. Do a uh, call roll. Karen? Yes. Yeah. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Linda? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay.